Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Binding Your Moz, episode 11. Today we're going to talk about the China manufactured cells, batteries, that are showing up more and more often uh, in the batteries offered to vapors by these wrapping companies, these battery wrapping companies, uh, Aspire, Vapcell, and, and other companies. Now, for them, it makes a lot of sense. It's a more consistent supply. They can even, if they're placing a big enough order, request a certain mix of specifications, capacity, current handling, maybe even cycle life. I don't know if they address that or not. So for them, it's great. They don't have to depend on the secondary markets and hope they can get a thousand LG HG2s here and ooh, maybe 10,000 over here. Oh, but these are two years old and these are six months old. That's a real pain for them to get a consistent supply. And it's led to a lot of problems and really encourages um, the fakes to be created and some other issues that we see within our community from a lot of different uh, not so um, honorable companies. But what does it mean for us? What's the good and the bad for these China manufactured cells? Let's take a look. Now for us, a good thing also is greater availability. Uh, more cells being offered, uh, they're solid, a lot of them are solid mid performance level cells coming out of China. And a lot of the China companies, they are huge, established companies. They have great quality control, great safety testing and safety records, BAK, Golden Cell, E-Star, Lyshen, ATL, and a whole bunch of others. Now, I don't know who cells are being used by these battery wrapping companies. Uh, they, they're not open with the information and you just can't call up a factory and say, who are your clients? But there are opportunities here since China, it's something like one quarter of the world market to get some good cells, some alternatives for it. Whether they're being used or not, I don't know. And that's where a lot of my testing comes in to try to find out what these are. And that kind of leads in to the bad. There's some smaller battery companies out there with unknown quality control, unknown safety records, and we don't even know if they're doing safety testing. Um, some of them claim safety testing, but I, we can't verify that. Well, sometimes you can. You can go like Underwriter Laboratories, UL. You can go and look up the listed number and make sure the company names match. So, this can be a, a very bad thing for us. Yes, there's some great big companies there, but everybody wants in on the action because the profit margin on these batteries is really high. And so that's not a good thing for us. A big problem is inconsistent capacity and performance. Now, one example is the VAP cell Gold 3100, formerly 30 amp cell, after five days of testing, it looks like it's gonna be somewhere in the 20 to 25 amp range. The performance is all over the place. And this is uh, an acknowledged problem by the battery wrapping companies themselves that the, perform uh, the quality control or that they, maybe not the quality control, that's the wrong way to put it. Because uh, Samsung, LG, they have a range of performance that comes out of there, but they divide them up into pretty narrow grades. So grade A is gonna be only a slight change in performance. Well, the China battery companies, I don't know, maybe they set a pass fail mark and everything above it gets sold and everything below, I don't know what happens to it. Uh, or they may have grades with just a much wider tolerance. You know, Samsung would allow that much performance variation and the China company might allow that much performance variation. Now for them and most of their applications, that's fine. For us, that's not fine. That's a big deal if you just have a 20 amp battery and then, it, or you know, think you're buying a 30 amp battery, then it's a 22 amp battery the next time you buy it and maybe a 25 then and then a 20 amp the next someone else buys it. That's a big deal for us. We would just like, it's okay to sell a 20 amp battery. Just tell us it's a 20 amp battery. So this kind of thing can be a, uh, a problem for us. Sales can change at any time. Yeah, that's huge. Now we have fakes. Um, you have lower grade sales for the big four, Samsung, um, Murata, Sony, LG, and Panasonic Sanyo. But for iJoy, Vapcell, and all the other companies, at any time they want, even without their knowledge, when they don't want, the sales can change. Now factories will do this. Factories will say, it's not that big a change. What do you, don't bother people. Just go ahead and make the change. It's for the better. Right now it's only low and middle amp rated cells. You know, maybe 20 amp or so for the uh, occasional 25. 20 amp or so for the 18650s. 25, even 30 amp for the bigger cells. You're not gonna find the Samsung 30Ts, the Samsung 20S, uh, type of performance coming out of China. 
Perhaps they will in the future. Right now, no. But most of the vapors are in the middle too. So that can be a bad thing. But perhaps I'm not. I'm being unfair. It can also be a good thing too, because greater this ties in with greater availability. What does all this mean? I need a new rating system. I need to find a way, and I'm working on it, to pass on to the community how inconsistent certain cells are. I'm going to go from testing two to testing four every time, adding other testing to them, full capacity testing of every cell, AC internal resistance, DC internal resistance, and then picking the worst performer of those four and running the discharge graphs on it to estimate the current rating. And from that, establish a range. Probably a 5 amp range. If it's a trash, really crap battery, it might be 10 amp range. So you'll no longer get a 20 amp battery as my estimated rating. It'll be 20 to 25 amp or uh, 22 to 27 amp. I, I don't want to do this, but it better reflects what we're getting with these batteries. Namely, you could get any one of those. What else can the community do? Certainly for the distributors and vendors, if you're getting China manufactured cells or any cells and they're not from the big four, or you can confirm it's not a rewrap of something from the big four, then ask, well, actually, you know what? No matter what, ask for the UN 38.3 safety report. UN 38.3 is discharge, puncture testing, short circuit testing, uh, heat and cold. Everything needs to pass. That cell needs to pass in order to be shipped by air. It's a worldwide national standard. They all have to pass this. They better. Now, there are some other ones like IEC, e, or, uh, IEC 62133 or EN 62133. That's for the European Union. It's almost the same. And Underwriter Laboratories, uh, UL 1642 is another one. Almost all the same. If they have the paperwork for any of those, get that paperwork. Get the material safety data sheet, or now they call safety data sheets. If they don't have that, don't buy those cells. We have no idea. Now, even if you do get the paperwork, there may be a company out there that's forging it, but at least somebody's getting you some paperwork. And it's a step in the direction, and it's letting these companies know, especially the battery wrapping companies know, that we are paying more attention, that we know there are issues here. And these battery wrapping companies can go back to the factories and tell the factories, look, we need tighter control, we need tighter grading, we need the paperwork, because people aren't buying our batteries without it. This is important. For the community, just as vapors, what can we do? Report the problems that we have. If we see a cell change, let me know. Let somebody know. Uh, spread the word, post it. Uh, you know, tell other vapors. It's the only thing we can really do now while we try to slowly change the industry. And it's an industry that's not prepared for this because no one's really cared as much as we do. Working together as a community, lending the battery companies know we want this paperwork that we are watching and know what's going on it can go a long way to minimizing this and hopefully it's just concentrating on the good stuff. And that's pretty well where we are now. We're fracked, but it can get better. We just have to be able to work at it. Just think a couple of years ago, you know, all the ridiculous uh, battery ratings are everywhere and now we're starting to see more and more continuous current ratings on batteries. We can do that now for the China manufactured cells for better consistency and more paying more attention to what we need. And as a result, they may start coming out with better cells too because we let them know we're going to buy them. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.